you are here to learn how to defend yourself against Discord image loggers. This video is for educational purposes only and is only recorded and uploaded to YouTube so you can learn how to defend yourself against this attack. Quick update, you got the mustache growing in. Honestly, that one Snapchat filter kind of convinced me to give it a try. So anyway, let's hop straight into it. We're going to be looking at Decrypted's Discord image logger. So Decrypted, my boy, if you ever want to have a little competition, see who's the better skid, let me know because uh, this guy is actually pretty decent. He's made a few cool things. And what he made here, not anything crazy, but it's clever. Basically, as you see right here, it's an IP logger that uses Discord's open original feature to steal IPs. Okay, so let me show you what exactly that means. So for example, we have this GIF right here. If we click on it, we see that we can open it in browser. So this is the same thing as open original. Open original is what it was before. Now it's open in browser. We click on it and then this link is taking you to the following website, tenor.com, blah, 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 blah. So tenor.com, we visited the site and now notice that we have a URL in our browser. What does this remind you of? Grabify. If you go on any link, open it in your browser, your IP can be pulled. So this basically uses that feature of Discord to get you here. Now, this main.py is basically the main file behind what happens. It mimics a website by handling HTTP requests, and it has like some CSS and stuff, basically just shows your custom image and does a few things in the background, like get all this information. And it has some more features that we'll go after. And I will, of course, explain how to defend yourself against this, how to prevent it, how to detect it because that's what this video is made for. So step number one, you want to create a GitHub repository. If you don't have a GitHub account, click off this video. Ah! Okay, yeah, so you just want to go on your Discord account and create a new repository. So I already have a repository created. I just tested it before recording the video. What you want to do, add a file, create new file, and then just control A, copy, paste it here. You want to put it into an API folder. I'll explain why in a sec, but you want to go API slash and then name whatever you want the name of your Python file to be. It doesn't have to be main.py. And in my opinion, it shouldn't be because that's a little bit suspicious. So I'd honestly go with something like image.py and commit changes. And also we need requirements.txt. Just copy these two and do the exact same thing, except don't change the name of this one. Okay, so this is what your repository should look like. You should have an API folder, click on it, and you should have whatever.py and requirements.txt. So click on image.py, and this is where we're going to customize it a little. So our Discord webhook goes here, and our image URL goes here. First, we're going to just test out the base functionality of this. I'm going to demonstrate it, then explain how to defend against it. We're going to do that before going anywhere else with this. So first webhook, you want to create a server. I'm going to go add server, create my own, I'm going to call it image log demo for educational purposes only. So I'm going to create a new channel. Let's say this is a webhook. And then you want to go on edit channel integrations and then create web. So here we go. You just copy your webhook URL. So you want to click edit and replace this right here with your discord webhook. So your discord webhook is where the script is going to send all the information that it gets. So it's pretty important. Okay, now image. So link to your image. You want to open up a new tab and do a little bit of brainstorming. Eh, I'm going to stick with bliss, you know, good old bliss right here. Uh, search for it. Let's say I want it to be this. You go right click, open image, a new tab. And then this is the image URL right here. You want to make sure that it ends with a file extension. That's like a typical image extension. Just choose like a normal image. So we see it ends with dot JPG. I'm just going to copy this and paste it for the image URL. Then commit changes. And that's basically our code for the website. That's basically done. Now is that we actually need to host it because right now it's just sitting in our GitHub repository, right? We actually have to slap a URL on that and it has to be web hosted. So just look up Vercel. It should be this Illuminati looking thing. So you're gonna have to create an account, blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna see this add new button, create this and then project. Now I already connected my GitHub account, but if you didn't, you're gonna have to connect it and then choose your repository. So this is my repository right here. I can just import it. So give it a project name. I'd say kind of important because it shows up in the URL. So whatever the hacker puts here is what's going to show up in the URL. Clicks on it and Discord gives you a quick pop up asking, are you sure you want to go to this website? So they might try to be a little sneaky, throw in some like tenor because that's the website that usually uses GIFs. All right, we're just going to go with that and then deploy. So once it's finished, you should get this pop up. Just click on continue to dashboard and here you go. 
So these domains, this is basically under domains, these links right here, you're given this one and two other ones. And um, if we click on it, we get a 404 not found error. But that's because we actually have to access the folder. So we want to go slash API and then slash whatever we called our Python file. So I called it image.py, put in whatever you called it. You don't have to put the extension. You can just leave it at image. So anyway, you want to copy this. And now this is the attacker's malicious URL. So in our server, in general, Let's say we send this. This is what it does. It's pretty sneaky. First, it's just going to be a loading image that's never going to load. And you just don't know what to do, all right? And especially if it's something that you want to see or you're curious about, you're going to be incentivized to figure out what it is. But if you go on it, you will see this open in browser button. So we click on that. Discord gives us a little warning, which is good. But let's say you're like, okay, visit website. Okay, the image will pop up. You're like, oh, okay, you got the image and you're good. But now, little do you know, the hacker has a server with a webhook that just got sent your information. IP provider, ASN country, region, city, cords, time zone on mobile VPN. But yeah, I also forgot to mention that when the attacker sends the URL, the GIF in the first place, they get this little message right here saying, okay, the link was sent. And that's because Discord tries to retrieve it and obviously it doesn't load. So it sees Discord's IP and it says, oh, okay, it was sent. Then it waits for the user to open it up. What will the attacker do from here? They can run a DDoS attack and boot you offline, which is the worst case scenario. They have your coordinates. So they have your approximate location. Another thing that's really popular to do now Nowadays, just copy all of this, paste it in the chat, and they'll call you and they'll say, I have all your information, everything tied to your name, your family, blah, blah, blah. and they'll basically scare you out of your mind and you'll think that it's over and that anonymous is after you. So look out for that. Now, to defend yourself against this, there's two things that you can do. Number one, use a VPN, which is what I am doing right now. This video is sponsored by. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. No sponsors. I'm only sponsored by myself. Go visit my private community, HTTPS www.school.com slash anonymous2, anonymous2.0. I have courses, private files, videos, Discord server. Check it out. It's sick as hell. This video is sponsored by myself. So anyway, I'm using a VPN. Uh, that's why I'm not worried about any of this information here. I won't even have to blur it out. But if I wasn't, even though it's not anything that's too specific, just having your information locked isn't that pleasant. So another thing is just of course, being cautious of what you click on. If you see an image load for this long, then obviously that's a red flag. And if you want to take it a step further and click on this and check out the URL, that should basically tell you if it's legit or not. So just use what you learned from this video. If you never watched this video, you'd not even be aware of this, right? And you might be getting image log. But now you know what to look out for and how to defend yourself. But there are also some other features which I'll show you how to defend yourself against because a VPN won't even help those. So let's go back to the script and I'm going to quickly go over some of the other features. So we have crash browser, which tries to crash slash freeze the user's browser. And we have accurate location, which uses GPS to find the user's exact location. And we also have a custom message right here, VPN check, anti-bot, all this other stuff. But we're just going to go over these. So first we're going to start with accurate location. Let's set this to true. It basically just gives a pop-up asking if it can use your location. It gets sent to the webhook. Here we're going to commit changes. And after we commit changes, after we update something, we see that Vercel kind of has to rebuild it. So give it a second. And when it's ready, we know that it's updated. So let's go back to Discord. Let's open that image up again, visit site. And now it gives us a pop up it wants to know your location. Now, anyone with common sense would probably not allow because why would they need your location? But if for some reason you do allow it to, and then from the attacker side, your coordinates were just sent and a VPN will not fix this. I'm using a VPN and these are my actual coordinates. I clicked on this Google Maps link right here and uh, <laughs> it's literally my house. But anyway, to protect against this feature, just do not give location access. And the final feature that we're going to go over is the crash browser. So I'm going to set this back to false. We're going to set the crash browser to true and the crash browser is also going to pop up this message. Commit changes. We give Vercel a second to load. And once it's loaded, we're going to open up the GIF again again, or the image open in browser and <laughs> Our browser is officially frozen, so you can't switch tabs. You can't move anything. You can't even close the tab. And this is what happens. <laughs> okay, that's good. If you close the tab early enough, it'll recover. If it doesn't, though, um, I'll show you a little trick. So if you're running on Mac OS or Chrome, this will be especially worse. I think Windows handles this the best. Windows R, task kill, dash IM chromeexe f If task manager is bailing on you, this is what you do. There you go. And that is it for the image logger. So everything that was shown in this video was meant for you to learn from so you can defend yourself because 
this type of stuff happens in the real world and yeah stay safe i will see you in the next video thank you for watching till the end hope you learned and i will see you next time peace